Hi, my name is Dan, and in this video, I'm going to give a quick overview of uh, collision stuff in Unreal. This is the first in a, a short series about uh, collisions and collision detection. So the setup I've got here is I've got a third-person template map, and I've created a couple of quick blueprints. I've got one here which has got a, uh, a cube as a component in it. And I've placed one of those there. And I've got another one which has got the couch as a static mesh component in it. I've just got one there. Um, and I'm just going to quickly click play and demonstrate that. I can walk through the couch, but I can't walk through that block. Um, I'll go into the reasons for that couch not being able to be walked into sorry the couch not blocking um in the next video when i talk about uh, collision meshes uh, but in this one i want to show you the a very quick overview of what's going on inside unreal uh, to do with collisions and now if you've done any stuff with collisions before in any other setting you probably know that there are two elements to this the first is the collision detection and the second is the collision response so Collision detection is working out whether the two things hit each other or overlap, depending on what you're actually after. And the response is what the game or the program should do as a result of that contact. Okay, so at the moment, this um, cube here is, uh, is set so that it, it will block. Uh, so I'm going to highlight the cube and go down to the uh, collision detection. Stuff. So there's a section here on the collision detection. Um, there's top couple of things we don't really want to worry about. This one is important. Uh, can characters step up uh, on? Is we're not going to worry about that. And the collision presets is something else that's, that we're going to look at. That's important. So at the moment, that's set to block all dynamic, and this is set to generate overlap. So Unreal deals with these two ideas of um, colliding and overlapping somewhat separately, and it has different events that it uh, uses for these different circumstances. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to create a uh, hit events node here. Event hit. There we go. This event will be triggered when there is a hit, so when two blocking objects uh, touch each other. Um, and just to demonstrate what's going on here, I'm going to look at the string. Um, and I'm just going to. So there are several nodes coming out here. There's quite a lot of information you can get from a hit. Uh, I will deal with all of them in a later video, but for now, we'll just take this one, which is the name of the other actor or the other object that has hit this particular one. So this is inside the blueprint, which is for the cube, not inside the third person character. But it's the third person character I'm going to move to make that collide. Um, and that script should just give us the name of the other object. So here we go as we walk into it, and then it's third person character. Uh, and as you can see, if I keep touching, it, it keeps doing it. I've just let go. I'm going to be pushing forwards. That's generating many, many hit events there um, as that happens. Okay. Um, so that's the event that happens when you have a hit. The stuff that I want to look at is how do we get a, a overlap? So the, well, the first thing that we've got to do is we've got to stop the blocking. So that is where it actually won't let it overlap. And so instead, we're going to, instead of block all dynamic there, we're going to change it to no collision. And we make that change and go in and play. And then we can walk through it. Very simple. Okay. Let's go back in. The, I said the other part of it was overlap events. So we've got here generates overlap events. and you might have seen this one before, which is on actor overlap. So actor 
Uh, once again, I'm demonstrating you have to sometimes try several things before you find the right word. Um, and again, we'll just do a print string. And it'll tell us what the thing is that's been overlapped. Okay. Here we go. And the overlap doesn't work. Right. Now. I've done this on purpose because I actually didn't know what's going on here. Uh, we go back into our cube. We're actually set to no collision in the collision presets. And what we want to do overlapping is that we want overlap all. So no collision means we have no hit and no overlap being generated. So I'm going to compile that. And there we go. That's generating that on active begin overlap. So it only generates the event when you enter the overlap. There's, uh, you've probably seen there's also an on actor end overlap that you can use for when, when two objects part. Now I want to quickly show you that, um, that that overlap event is affecting both of the, the elements that are overlapping. So I'm just going to go into the third person character and duplicate that bit of script. So on actor begin overlap. Oh, that wrong. Let's assign it as binding events. So actor begin. This is the event we want. Um, string. Just going to connect that there. So, play. Then when we get the overlap, both those bits of script are running. You get third person character and my BP is telling you what things are overlapping. So, now, you might remember before we had a look at in our, our blueprint cube. This box here, generate overlap events. What happens if we uncheck that box? Let's find out. Let's uncheck it and try and do the overlap. The overlap. And it's not happening. And in fact, it's not happening inside the, um, the third person character either. So in order for a, an overlap event to be generated, both elements that overlap need to have that overlap, that generate overlap event selected for it. Okay. So we're going to uh, reset that back. However, um, I'm going to go back to the dynamic, uh, buckle dynamic, and see what happens. So we've still got, You'll notice when we're doing the overlap and we change it to overlap all, it wasn't doing the blocking. And when it wasn't doing the blocking, it didn't generate the hit events. And when we put it back to blocking, it generates the hit events, but it doesn't generate the overlap events. So you've got either hit events or overlap events. Okay, one last thing to show you in this blueprint, which is that, <coughs> um, in terms of collision response, so uh, at the moment, all we're doing is printing strings. Uh, we can make anything that we want happen, obviously, as a result of detecting either an overlap or a hit, uh, if we've got the blocking on. Um, but up here, you'll see that there's uh, physics section as well. And if we click on simulate physics, it then actually automatically changes the collision pretext, uh, presets to physics actor down here. Uh, which is fine. We're going to compile. Um, there's a, going to be a whole series of other stuff about physics, hopefully, in the series of uh, tutors. Let's see what happens now. We'll still get the uh, block event, sorry, the hit event, but the object now is pushable. Um, and if I put it up in the air, it could fall. I can make things, make it bounce. I can make all sorts of things happen. So that's a very quick overview of collision in Unreal. Uh, just to recap, we've got two kinds of event that we can trigger, and we need to set up the settings of our objects uh, in so that we get what we want out of it. We've got overlap events. Um, quite often we want to use um, 
uh, overlap boxes or collision boxes to detect overlap events. Uh, overlap events sometimes for proximity. So uh, if you want to know when your character is close to a door, so they can open the door, for example, you might be using a collision box for that to detect that proximity. So that's an invisible box that's n that covers an area close to a visible object. In this case, we've just been using the visible objects. And then the second type of event that can be created is a hit event, which only happens when we've got blocking happening. So that's it from me for now.